Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and bizarre news. Who would have thought that Harvey is able to get an appeal and potentially a retrial, but our man Johnny Depp cannot? I just didn't understand this, so I wanted to bring in two experts, and oh my God, I'm so honored to have this panel in front of me. We got the Black Belt Barrister himself, Daniel's here, as well as uh, Christopher Melcher. All, both uh, countries now covered here legally. I'm so happy to have you both. Daniel, welcome back to the show. How are you doing, man? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Always a pleasure to see you. Hey, Christopher, so glad you could help me understand this because we were we were texting. I, I was getting your thoughts as I was going to re, uh, report on this case. And yes, it looks like Harvey. I'm just going to say his first name so we don't get dinged because I do think he is shadow banned for good reason. I'll be honest. I don't like this guy. Uh, but he's now been granted an appeal on his New York conviction and could get a uh, bail if the retrial occurs. And when I went to sort of figure out, well, how did this happen? Uh, and I, I love your, your, ex we'll go to you first, Christopher, to get your expertise. How does this happen? I did sort of look under and I'm like, look, I don't like this guy, but there are seem to be questions of, did he get a fair trial? A lot of witnesses were brought in that weren't charging him with a crime. And it is sort of hearsay in a way. And it does beg the question of, was, was that allowed? Did that taint the jury? Is that fair? No matter what we think about the man, was it a fair process? Christopher, what is your reaction when you see that he was, because he was he was, uh, he was was not given the appeal from the lower courts, but now the newer court did just grant him this appeal. What is your reaction to this? And do you feel like Harvey did get a fair trial? Okay, so first we'll just break down where we are in the process here. So he had a trial and the jury convicted him. He then went to this intermediate appellate court, which everyone has a right to have their case reviewed as long as they timely request the appeal. So that appellate court heard all the arguments and unanimously rejected them. Now he's gone to the highest court in New York, the highest appellate court, and asked for permission for them to review this. And they don't have to do that. And they listened to his pitch and they said, yes, we will review it. That does not mean uh, that they're going to agree with his arguments. They just agree that this is worthy of consideration. So at the end of it, they could say, yeah, we, we agree that you didn't get a fair trial and send it back down. Or they may say, hey, we like the way that this went and uh, affirm it. So this highest court here, they're almost like policy making. They're, they're, they don't take any old case. They don't really care particularly about the litigants' rights that are before them, they want to make broad decisions that affect all people in New York. And so in his appeal, he's raising multiple arguments, some about a juror that should have been kicked off, he thinks, but mostly about uncharged uh, acts. So certainly there were people who said, uh, hey, uh, I'm a victim, and uh, that was charged and they could certainly testify, no problem there. But there were other folks who said they also simil had similar experiences, uh, you know, trying to say this neutrally, um, yes. with Harvey, and, um, but they were not counted as victims. So these were what we call uncharged crime evidence that was brought in and Harvey, you know, properly objected saying, look, we don't convict people based on the character. We, we, we convict people based on their conduct and drudging up what somebody may or may not have done in the past to others does not prove what he did to these particular victims that he's being charged with, uh, you know, violating their rights. And, Which, and I'll be honest, sounds like a, that sounds like a good argument, I got to be honest. As much as I hate the man, I mean, is, is that a valid argument, I guess, is the question, Christopher. Generally, yes. Um, and, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, look, it's very easy in all of these cases that we comment on to go against the, the hated and saying this is wrong. This person should be, you know, locked up forever, whether it's Amber or Harvey, you, you know, you name it, the person of the day that we do not like. But my analysis is different. It's like, if I were charged with a crime, how do I want to be treated? What rules do I want to apply to me? And that's what I suggest you all should be thinking about, too. If you ever felt, you know, you ever fell victim here to this system and were charged with something, what rules do you want to apply to you? Do, yeah. If you were charged with something and you were, you know, defending yourself, claiming you're innocent, would you want to be judged based on the conduct that's alleged against this particular victim 
and also have a whole bunch of other people who are not victims come in and testify and say, yeah, you know, Chris did the same thing to me. So again, if you look at it in that lens, you, you may be analyzing it properly. So why did they allow these witnesses to come in? I mean, what is that? Is that standard? Like how, how did that get through? Because even in the Johnny trial, right? The objection here say there were so many people that weren't allowed to come in to speak to things that weren't being charged. Was, was that okay that that came in? Were these witnesses properly vetted and used? So, you know, I mean, the judge uh, thought so, and also this intermediate appellate court thought so, and the angle that they're, they're going on is this common scheme, plan, or motive. So you, you've heard of MO or modus operandi. So you, you have, there's, there's just criminals, you know, may have a pattern that they follow, and it's very distinctive, and that's basically their mark. And um, they do the same thing over and over again to these class of people. And if it becomes such a clear pattern, then um, it could be evidence. It's not of character. It's not just saying convict him because he's a bad guy. It's saying, look, we have these victims, and this is very difficult in these type of cases. These happen generally in private. It's in a hotel room. It's Harvey and this young yeah. lady. And it's his word against her word. And, and it's those are very difficult cases to win. And so what they tried to what they did in this case is saying, look, there is a pattern that this guy follows. He goes after a particular class of people and he does things in a very specific way. And that's his trademark. And so that's the angle that they use. So it's not character, it's trademark really. Mm. Um, and, and that is proper if the evidence supports it. And, and hey, the trial judge felt that it did, the appellate court felt that it did. Now we'll see what the New York High Court, they might say, hey, we wanna give a thumbs up to this approach to make it easier to convict people. Or they may say it went too far. We gotta wait about a year to figure that out. So we'll get a year. But uh, Daniel, as you hear this happening, like what is your reaction as someone on the other side of the pond uh, when you see this sort of thing happening, knowing, seeing that we, I know you're fighting and people, please make sure if you haven't mm. already, go support this petition to reopen the appeal for Johnny, which we, I just don't believe was was right. Uh, mm -hmm. When you when you see Johnny didn't even get a shot at this trial when his was clearly filled with, with, with problems, but you see now Harvey is getting an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your reaction to this? Well, I have to agree with everything that's just been said, because I absolutely agree that we need to look at these things in the sense of how would you like to be treated? And I often say that the law should make sense, should make common sense. It should be something that everybody can look to, to be treated fairly, a fair process and everything else. And so, as as you say, um, Andy, love or hate the guy, uh, hate mostly, obviously, but... <laughs> Hate, hate the guy or not, you you have to respect the process. And looking at whether something is fair, again, I always say the rules are there to make sure that something is fair. Now, in our um, in our our rules, there is a route which this uh, petition is is seeking to invoke. It would be unprecedented because it would ordinarily be by an application of the parties, although the court can make orders of its own motion. But the the point of the principle is this. These rules are there to to provide for fairness for how would you want to be treated if this were your situation. So what we have here is, is a very unique set of circumstances. So drawing those two principles together, how would you want to be treated? How would you want it to be fair? We now, whether everybody appreciates it or likes it or not, we have two very different um, results from two different trials, which ultimately had the, the same underlying issues in the case, or the, it wasn't the same cause of action or the same parties or the same uh, defendants, but the, the rules provide, and it's in our 5230 of the appeals rules of the civil procedure rules for England and Wales. And there are three limbs to this. And I think these sum it up quite well. The court of appeal or the high court will not open, so it's written in the negative, will not open a final determination of any appeal unless it's necessary to do so in order to avoid real injustice. So if we pause on that one for a moment, to avoid a real injustice, is it necessary to reopen this to avoid a real injustice? And that therefore begs the question between the two trials. 
is it seen to be a real injustice? Well, many obviously argue that it is, and certainly the jury uh, in Virginia would um, would probably agree with that. Uh, moving to the second limb, the circumstances are exceptional and make it appropriate to reopen the appeal. Well, these circumstances are surely exceptional and make it appropriate to reopen the appeal, I'd certainly argue. And finally, there's no alternative effective remedy. Now, some people might argue that there was a remedy because Amber Heard was ordered ordered to um, make, make a payment, but it wasn't the actual defendant in the UK trial. So therefore, for me, those those three are satisfied here. And so drawing that back, if it's permitted for, well, we, we don't know yet, but uh, th this is moving forward for Harvey. So it, it stands to reason this this um, this should be looked at again with with the uh, the rules that we have to follow the same line of fairness. How would you want to be treated if you've had uh, two separate trials that ultimately come to very different decisions with the same underlying principles? Um, it, it's the only way, really, to reopen this, and it's it's there as a as a, as a fallback or a catch all, so that there is this procedure in place so that the courts of England and Wales can relook at these things in these circumstances as the the first limb of this test goes to put it very succinctly to avoid real injustice and that's my view to to avoid a real injustice to allow a reopening and if you look you know, further down in the rules it it includes uh applications for permission to appeal so not even the the full appeal itself the the application for permission to appeal. So even if the courts were to make this motion to reopen this permission to appeal, it's not finally determinative. It, it simply allows the permission to appeal, which to avoid a real injustice, yes, I, I think that the, the two are equally arguable. Yeah. And it's just interesting because Amber's out there making her argument, of course we're appealing and they're going through that whole process, which I know, mm -hmm. Christopher, you have said is very unlikely she will win. Um, but I don't know. I just see now Harvey gets this. Amber's getting it in the UK. I'm getting quite frustrated that there wasn't even like an attempt for him to allow to really see this through. It, it does feel like, especially now, a lot of things have come forward that really do make it an injustice. Uh, obviously mm -hmm. different place, different rules. Uh, but Christopher, do you feel like Johnny should have had a chance to appeal just as Amber, I feel like, do you feel like Amber and Harvey are getting better chances at appealing these cases here than Johnny got in the UK? And do you think that's right or wrong? You're muted. Sorry about that. One worries, thing is Johnny chose his forum. He chose to sue in the, the courts in England and Wales. So he, he subjected himself to their the rules. rules. Yeah. And, and probably thinking that um, because they don't have First Amendment protections like we do in the U.S., that he would have a leg up in, um, because, I, I, as I understand, the Sun had, had a, a burden to establish some mm -hmm. correctness of its reporting, whereas in the U.S., it's, it's completely the opposite. We got to show that we were defamed. And so he picked the system. Now, um, but the, the, the judgment... Um, you know, by the English court is is nonsensical in some points, as Daniel is very well laid out. So I would think um, that I mean, as 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 kind of students of the law, as as lawyers, we you know we love the law. We want it to be applied uniformly. We want it to make sense. We want justice to happen. I would think that that decision makes such little sense. Just just on its four corners, reading the document, it, it's nonsensical in some points. That I would hope that 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 would be reviewed just as a quality control check. Again, not even so much Johnny's rights, but just saying like, hey, for the system's good, um, that they would want to take another look at it. Maybe they say, hey, it's all fine. But there, like I say, there are points in there that just absolutely make no sense. Yeah, and Daniel, there's still, I heard supporters are out there always just trying to say conspiracy theorists are trying yeah. to negate the UK trial. They, they're constantly using, she was found, you know, he was found guilty on all, on 12 charges. Why This is a slam dunk over and, and, and done with. Uh, reactions to sort of that narrative starting to get a lot of uh, pickup uh, here in the, in our, in our mm -hmm. neck of the woods? Well, there's there's a couple of things to pick apart there. First, Firstly, and I've read that a couple of times, found guilty. Um, well, First of all, that's not the case because th that suggests that it was a criminal trial, which it was not. It was a civil trial, so it's a, a much different uh, burden of proof and standard of proof. Um, 
But not only that, I I would also take the view fairly firmly that this was one decision in one court in one jurisdiction. There was a subsequent decision in a different jurisdiction, which had what was argued to be the effective opponent and bluntly Amber Heard. And when this distinction between the two cases is is, is paraded sort of out in front as, um, you know, quote unquote, we won in the UK, that, as we've said before, draw, draws together these these two trials and surely that supports the notion that the that there's a nexus between the decisions. And so if there is that nexus between the decisions, surely the, the latter decision, i.e. the unanimous word verdict in, in Depp's favour for everything he was claiming, overrules, overrides this decision, albeit not jurisdictionally, but that surely goes towards our rules to allow the, the uh, permission to appeal to avoid a real injustice. So... As I've said before, you you can't have this both ways. They are either two completely separate trials, in which case they they cannot and should not refer to the UK verdict um, ju judgment to, uh, to 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 sell sell that line. So, if if they are um, if they are linked, then surely the latter decision should override the first. And so, as you say, it's it's cherry picking almost um to to suit the narrative as i've seen in in many headlines recently just taking taking one or two lines from from one of the sealed or now unsealed uh, motions in limine and and running with a headline which means something completely different in my view to what the documents actually say yeah the same goes for this you you can't you can't simply take a, a previous judgment which obviously predates this verdict and, and use that as as your your ammunition. You either take them both together or not at all. Do you? How are you feeling now? And again, guys, please go to thechange.org. You can help uh, get some raise the awareness to try and get more signatures to try to attempt to get this done, which Daniel's trying to do. How, how are you feeling? Uh, any updates on this? Are you are you feeling nervous? Do you feel like there's still a shot at trying to get the attention for this made? I do feel it needs more attention. Uh, I am grateful for those that have signed it so far, and certainly um, lots of messages that have come through are very supportive of that. Uh, I I feel that the, that the tide is in his favor, but I do feel that it 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 probably needs more signatures. To be quite honest, I think it needs quite a lot more signatures. Um, it it really needs a a a broad and wide support to show that this is a decision that really needs to be looked at again. And I I doubt very much Depp's team are going to make the application to do that under this rule. As I say, it would be unprecedented for the court to do it of its own motion, but there's there's no rule that specifically precludes the court from doing that. Many people have said that, you know, it it, it won't happen and uh, that's not how it works. Well, it could be how it works. It's somewhat unprecedented, yes, but so is every case that is that is novel and that stands as a test case. This could well stand as a test case. I don't think ever before we've had quite the unique set of circumstances as we have here, because ultimately we have this underlying uh, factual matrix of what happened between them. And without getting into that, the factual matrix between th those two um, i.e. Depp and Heard, uh, there, there were articles written about both by the Sun newspaper in the UK trial and Amber Heard herself. And so those two separate cases based on the same uh, factual matrix and then in different jurisdictions, different um, actual opponents, but the same effective opponent by by fairly fairly strong argument. I think that's quite an unprecedented situation. And now I feel the more that, um, let's call it Team Amber, I think the more that Team Amber uh, championed the UK judgment, I think the more it underscores that it's a real injustice that we have a jury verdict which completely contradicts and undermines that judgment. And therefore, uh, the, the appeal should be allowed. Certainly, permission to appeal should be allowed and then, and then go, go forward to a full appeal. Well, you guys can support Daniel by going over the change.org and supporting that. You can also support him over at Black Belt Barrister. Thank you for that. Christopher, any, any final word from you on, on, any, on things Daniel just said? Well, I mean, it would it would be nice if it were reviewed because there there are it's inconsistent. Uh, the two um, 
judgments. And uh, especially now that the jury in Virginia has determined that Amber's claims are false, then obviously the reporting by the Sun uh, should also be false. But um, again, you know, that that system will work its way through. And and I think if Johnny has the standing to file the request to reopen or whatever it's called in England to ask for this yes, appeal. Yes, And, you know, the fact that he hasn't done so, um, you know, hey, I mean, he, he's the guy with that, you know, you would normally think would be asking for that relief. And if he's not doing it, you know, what does that say? Uh, good question indeed. Make sure you follow Christopher over at Twitter on CA underscore divorce. And uh, again, uh, let's plug this petition. We could get some more love people uh, to make sure this happens. Uh, but uh, we got you guys have been doing good, but let's get it out there more. That's why I wanted to bring this back up. And I'm grateful for both of you bringing your amazing minds here as we bring this conversation. So there you go. If you're wondering what was happening with Harvey, that's what's happening. And yeah, I'm still frustrated on both cases. Why is Harvey allowed to get this? And why isn't Johnny? Doesn't make any sense. What are your thoughts? I want to hear them down below. Make sure you subscribe here to Black Belt Barrister. Christopher Melcher is also on YouTube. Hit the bell to all three of our channels. Smash the like button on their videos and leave your comments down below or your frustrations. Uh, We'll be live later today, so I hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys for watching here on Popcorn Planet.